that label and more of a, a, a education house. Like, you know, when we worked on YG's record, he was doing his thing in LA and he's running around. And I sat down, I'm like, hey, play me your album. And he's like, album? I only know mixtapes. You know what I mean? And I had to sit down and say, listen, let's go to Atlanta, let's stay for three months, and let's listen to a bunch of old albums. Let's listen to Life After Death, you never heard that. Let's listen to Ready to Die. Let's listen to all these old records. And it became an education process, you know? And then his goals changed. And it wasn't like, let me drop a mixtape to get hot. It was like, I want to make it classic too. I want to make a great record. And then, get in the studio and then it becomes something else. And you get mustard in the studio and then you're like, yo man, like I want to be the best producer in the world. I want to do this. And it's like, well, we got to make something that's going to rival 2001 or we got to rival Kendrick. And I think the problem with these new artists is they don't feel like they're going to benefit from the label because everybody's talking about monetization and not talking about the art. Like back in the day when you had these guys like Michael Jackson and Prince, they were competing with each other. It wasn't like who's going to sell the most records. It was like, who's better? You know what I mean? Who's, who's going to be the dopest? You know what I mean? And that's, we got to get back to the sport of what we're doing, and even with black music, because then, like, when even the Jeremiah record that you mentioned, Jeremiah's in the studio, and he's like, man, uh, man, they saw, they took me off this Kid Ink record, the main chick, they took me off uh, whatever the other Kid Ink record was. I'm going to show them I can make a better record, you know? And that's how we came up with Don't Tell Them, you know what I'm saying? Or when we're in the flow in the studio, and, we have three studios working at the same time. We're trying to make a record about friendship and switch homie Kwan. YG tells them the idea, and they go in the other room. We work on the verse three times. We come out with my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Or when we did Who Do You Love, we got the beat, right? And then Jeezy comes in the studio like, this beat's a hit. I don't care what y'all do to this. So we came up with four hooks before we got to Who Do You Love. You know what I mean? Then he did the verse three times. And then it took us 20 other sessions just to get the bridge going, you know what I mean? It's, it's because the goals are not about monetization, the goal is about we want to be the best, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. And, I think, and I think from there, then you're gonna get something that translates and the people feel it. Then, it. then people feel it through, I don't care how they hear it, through Spotify, through the radio, through whatever, they feel the emotion because they felt what we felt when we were in the studio. And I think if you want to really break through, we have to really become more of an educational house. We have to look at ourselves like directors with actors or with coaches with athletes. How do I make them better? You know what I mean? Like, you know what? Don't shoot from three. You're not going to make it all the time. You need to play the post a little bit. You know what I mean? You know, you got to stay on topic a little bit more. You know, you over there rapping about everything. You know what I mean? It's, a, it's an artist development process that I think is missing from the front line of the a &R thing. And, and, we're, and we are going to die if we lose that process. I love you. Wow. I love that. So you're, you're talking about um, 